So let's just start a new scene. And it's very similar once you get the hang of that. Uh, this one is just a very slightly different, a few different check boxes. All right, so I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to draw a CV curve tool. And, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. And once again, I'll, I'll just offset a few points just for good measure. All right, there we go. That's simple. Um, all right, so this time, instead of going for our polygon primitives, excuse me, um, we're going to go to NURB, NURBS primitives. And down here, you can see circle. Or if, you'd, if you've installed the plugin that I mentioned earlier, um, you can get some more interesting ones. But for now, let's just hit circle and click X. I want to rotate that 90 degrees so it's uh, perpendicular to the curve. And I'm going to show you how to get a more precise um, snap to that curve. So what you'll do is just select your circle shape, hold shift, select your curve just like before. But now at this step, instead of stopping there, I'm going to hold down right click, go to control vertex, and press W to move and hold down V and I can snap to that point. So this is the way to get just it's a little more exact. So you know I'm being kind of a perfectionist with this. You don't have to do it by any means but you know that's exactly in the right place. So all right and now let's just rotate it along the uh, y-axis again and match that flow. So I want it to be perpendicular to that curve. All right, there we go. This time, because we're using a NURB circle instead of a polygon, we're going to have to switch the menu up here from polygons to surfaces. So go ahead and do that. All right, let's hit surface and extrude, but this time go to the options box. Now, I've already got some things set up, but I'm going to just reset the tool so that I can talk through some of these settings. The first thing that you want to do is um, specify that we want polygons. So once it's done this extrusion, instead of giving us a NURBS shape that we have to convert to polygons, it'll just do that conversion in the extrude. So go ahead and hit that. and it's set to triangles, which, you know, that could be good if you're making a game or something, but we want quads because we're, you know, we want to maybe model this later. Um, okay, that's good. Now, t -t 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 what else are we going to hit here? All right, so this tessellation method, um, this is how it's going to draw each edge loop along this um, curve. Now, if we hit control points um, and we hit extrude, oh, whoops, I forgot to select my uh, curve again. So make sure you have both of them selected. All right, so you could see a couple problems here. First off, it's not matching the uh, actual path of the curve. So that's an easy fix. Again, go into your construction history, uh, click on the extrude, and where it says fixed path, let's turn that on. You can also do that in uh, the options box, but I just wanted to show you where that was in the construction history in case you run into this problem. Um, the next problem that we have is that because I told it to draw in control points, I only have four control points. Um, that's okay. But you see the problem here is that we have this nice smooth curve, but we have now a really jagged um, polygon shape. And before what we did was we controlled the number of uh, edges when we extruded, but with this method, uh, we have to do it a little differently. So I'm going to delete that shape. And let's go ahead and shift select that again. Surfaces, extrude, options box. This time let's go to um, at path. That's the fixed path setting I just showed you. So now it's actually automatically flowing to that. Okay, so we've got only um, four edges on here, and that's because I chose control points. So remember when we right-click on this, we get 
and go to Control Vertex, hit 4 to wireframe, uh, you see it's it's creating edges exactly on those control points. Um, so what I what I like to do for this is rather than telling the extrude to have more points, uh, what I'll do is I'll actually build the curve with more points. So you build it the same way you did before, um, so you get that nice smooth curve. And now this time we're going to go to Edit Curves and we're going to go down to um, Rebuild Curve, hit the Options box, and we're going to tell it, let me reset these again, just the number of spans. So uh, this is how many control vertices it's going to have. So this time let's do 20 and that will get a much smoother curve. And right away you'll see that, you, you can see this is already really jagged. If I hit it, there you go, you get this super smooth curve. Um, and one of the limitations with doing it this way is it's going to be a lot harder to animate because now you have all of these uh, points instead of just a few. You know, you could put on soft selection. That's kind of one way around it. Um, and then you can sort of move it in a similar way. Uh, but, you know, anyway, let's, let's carry on. So select your circle, shift select your path and go to surfaces, extrude. All right, so here it is. Here's our 20 point curve. Um, and you know, if you wanna change that, you can rebuild the curve with any amount of uh, points that you want. So let's go to surface, extrude. And okay, so why did we do it this way? Well, there's a few reasons. So one of them is that now you have this nice, uh, simple, um, shape here that you can scale and make the entire thing bigger. Uh, it's just kind of easier to edit. So the main reason that I did this though is that if you look at the UV editor now, uh, you have nice, perfect, evenly spaced UVs all along the shape. And that's really the reason that I did this because uh, it's kind of crazy looking right now, but let's go ahead and uh, go into our tile settings for this uh, texture pattern and uh, it's repeating four times so let's let's just reduce that number and there you go um, there's something a little funky happening here but anyway all for all intents and purposes you know flip it over it looks a million times better than any kind of unwrap that I probably would have gotten so that is why I use um, NURBS instead of polygons. So let's talk a little more about this plugin um, and why I was using it. Uh, so for starters, let's go to creativecrash.com, which is where I downloaded this, and type FE primitives. And that's, that's where you can download it. It's free, uh, it's really great, and it works on PC and Mac, and I just highly recommend it. Um, there's more to it than just um, curves. If you look at uh, t -t -t polygon primitives and you can make uh, like a gear here, um, just some really neat stuff that will speed up your uh, workflow if you need to make things quick. And all of these, they're primitives, so they have uh, some really nice controls on them. You can change the width of them, the height. So anyway, if you take one thing away from this tutorial, download that plugin. But anyway, so now how do we use that for what we're doing? Uh, if you go to NURBS primitives and go down to the gear, uh, you see we have this gear shape. Now let's uh, snap it on there again, just to reinforce. And go to surfaces extrude. And there you go. So that's one of the uh, things you saw in the beginning on that image I made. Um, sort of a, just a more interesting looking tube. Um, and now, you because this is a primitive, you can go to the construction history on that curve shape and uh, change some settings on it. How many cogs does it have? And you can see this is all updating live and so it's just really great um, 
play around with it. See what you like. Uh, cog width. Sort of reduce it so it's just a nice little soft bump. And now if I hit 3 I can smooth that out and I have a, a really nice shape that took me absolutely no time to make and it has beautiful UVs on it. Alright, that's it for another CG Candy tutorial. Thanks for watching everybody. If you have any questions, feel free to write them and I'll do my best to respond. Stay tuned for more Maya and Cinema 4D tutorials.